But I remember my uncle, he would say, make sure you keep drawing. Like he would just say that like, every now and then, maybe he only said it once. But I remember that and that's like, kind of stuck with me. But if you never had that person to kind of push you in a direction which they recognise you had some kind of uh, talent in, then you can so easily like, you know, just, just never kind of believe that you can do that. There's so many, there's so many like things beyond the control that push us one way or the other and make us either hesitate or go. The truth is everyone is probably, you know, creative or, or a creative. So you kind of got to like allow yourself to break certain labels and you've got to focus on the skills that you actually feel you, you want to have or that you do have or that you like to work on. You know, if you fit yourself into someone else's world, you know, that is what you're doing. You kind of have to have to make your own lane if you can. So then it was like, well, all these things I, I, I think about in the abstract, I need to make them real, otherwise it's never going to be real. Um, so then that was it. It was like, okay, let's, let's just begin and let's, let's kind of sample and experiment. A lot of the designs now I'm doing on clothes um, and I want, to, I want to sell those clothes as, as kind of wearable art. And, and, and through selling those clothes, I want to raise money to support some of the people that I've worked with. Uh, doing things like you know helping refugees, whether it's helping them get uh, essential items like sleeping bags or tents, or or it could even be petrol to keep you know to keep their processes running. I think I'm quite open to the idea that you know every moment had some kind of inspiration in it. So therefore, it doesn't matter what you're listening to, whether it's the birds, whether it's uh, a musician, it's going to feed into kind of your psyche and your imagination. Yeah. It's probably like maybe one of my own insecurities and then posing a question subconsciously and then trying to find a way to express an answer. There's some work that maybe I started years ago that I thought was finished years ago, but then for whatever reason, a particular day I wake up and I'll, I'll like, oh, there we go, put some colour in it or there we go, I'll write a poem on it or and then it turns out, oh, it wasn't finished. And it was just waiting for a particular moment in time for it to be added to. The only truth is your own interpretation. And you know, as the person who made the work, my interpretation changes each time I look at it. So I can't really, you know, I can't expect to control what someone else who I don't know has a whole world of history beyond my kind of understanding. I, I don't know what they're gonna see. I've been kind of thinking about when I do a show, how do I engage the people that don't go to art shows or how do you engage people that don't think that walking into a gallery is for them? Which, you know, that, that might be people who tend to come from my background. So I'm thinking about how do, how do I engage with, with those people when it comes to showing all of this work that I've been working on for so long. I think you just got to, you know, you got to recognise certain patterns of people, you know. Some people, for whatever reason, depending on their culture, where they're from, congregate in, in different areas. So if you just put things in the same area each time, and these people don't congregate there, they're not gonna see it, there's no visibility. So you need to go to people where they are, communicate with them where they are, put things in their, their seeing space where they are, and that way you, you let them know that this is for them. This is an invitation to you, you are welcome here.